There's a lot of important things here. Most of it is post-game, but there's some things that will be relevant to us now as well. And I actually think, I think I said Makalania was the coolest looking temple. I think this is uh, right up there as well. This does look really, really nice. And I love the bridge as well. And the way the camera swings around while you're, while you're on there. Why did they abandon this temple? It's so cool. Okay, so here we are, Remium Temple. Okay, so what I will not be doing is heading into the Remium Temple because uh, Belgamine awaits us in there, but there is a whole side quest related to uh, the temple, so there's no point starting off now because I won't be able to finish it anyway. So I'll kind of come back in the post game and um, we'll see just uh, what Belgamine is up to in there. Okay, it's a very obedient chocobo who's just been just been waiting there. There is that Albid Primer that I was telling you about. Up to 24. Chocobos come to this forgotten temple to test each other's speed and skill. You who are listening to this, you have been accepted as a true rider. It is a chocobo custom that one must have a rider to challenge the champion chocobo that stands near this sphere. Okay. Mount the bridal chocobo waiting on the opposite side of the temple. Once you are astride the challenger, the race will begin. Okay. So, why would you want to engage in this odd race between chocobos? There are some seriously interesting prizes available for doing this. And the aim of the game is not just to win the race, but to um, to open some, some treasure chests along the way without touching uh, certain coloured poles that are around. And depending on how many uh, chests you're able to open while still winning the race, you get different uh, rewards. So let's just begin by winning the race first without having to worry about anything else. Yeah, let's do that. And then I'll put up a list of... Uh, and then I'll mention what we can win. Alright, let's do this. Hopefully I don't lose. So as you can see, there's those coloured poles that I was telling you about. And there's also treasure chests. And you can get a maximum of five. And obviously it gets progressively more difficult. The more time you spend getting chests, the, the more difficult it will be to win. So you do need to be careful. So winning the race is not too difficult. The whole point is uh, getting the chests. Oh, cloudy mirror. Hmm. This item opens ancient seals hidden throughout Spira. It seems to have lost its power, but there may be a way to restore it. So, the Cloudy Mirror is the first step towards getting the ultimate weapons in the game. So, everyone has an ultimate weapon known as the Celestial Weapons, and the Cloudy Mirror is the first step to getting it. But we can't really do too much with it right now, because it needs to be powered up. And when it is, this slot will be filled with something called the Celestial Mirror, and then we can go out and try and get everyone's um, Celestial Weapons. But that's obviously, again, post-game stuff, and it will take quite a while to do, so... I have the Cloudy Mirror, but obviously won't be doing anything with it at the moment. Okay, so you can do this race as many times as you want, and the prizes get interesting after the three chest mark. So if you get three chests and still win the race, you'll get something called Wings to Discovery. And Wings to Discovery, if you have 30 of them, which is what the, the race will give you, you will be able to customize break HP limit onto your armor. So although the characters are quite far off at the moment, let's say towards the end of the game you get to like the six, seven thousand mark, and um, you toss a stamina tablet, you can uh, get up to fourteen thousand HP, and it won't cap out at nine 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 nine. So although it's uh, it's early days for a for a break HP limit armor, it's, a, it's an interesting prize nonetheless. Uh, if you get four, you get pendulum. which is a very valuable item if you sell it. And also, if you customize it onto an armor, I think it is, not a weapon, but an armor, you can customize something called Master Thief. And uh, Master Thief enables you to only get rare steals. So for someone like Riku, a Master Thief weapon is uh, pretty essential. And five chests, which is the most difficult, but the best prize is uh, three stars and you get 60 of those. 
three stars. If you remember, I mentioned for someone like uh, a magic caster like Lulu, you can customize an ability called um, no MP cost, or one MP cost, pardon me. Uh, if you have one MP cost every single move, so even something that requires 90 MP like Ultima will only cost one MP. So you can imagine how useful that's going to be for someone like Lulu, even in the post game. So three stars is an amazing uh, thing to get. So that's why it's worth spending some time to, to get these. So I'll mess around a little bit, I'll see what I can get. I probably won't be able to get the five chest one because that'll be too difficult. I'll probably spend hours on it. But let me give it a go and... Um, I'll leave in the attempts where I actually end up winning something. Okay, so as you can see, even though I went the wrong way, getting three is not too difficult. It's, uh, it's four and onwards that starts to get a bit more challenging. Oh shit, I hit a pole! Oh fuck off, I didn't hit a pole. What? I did not hit a pole. So there you go, getting three is not too difficult at all. And hopefully I should be able to... I mean that's a seriously cheap way to, to break the HP limit. It's probably the easiest uh, it's going to be for you. So that's a break HP limit armor, done. Let's try and get four. Yes, just about. That's four chests. I have no idea how I'm going to get five, but four wasn't too bad. I think I've only ever gotten five chests once before, so it may take a while. Okay, that's Master Thief. Oh, you son of a... That's the final chest that you need, and it should shoot you right to the end, but it's tight. Ah, I'm just behind again. <laughs> this is going to be very close. Come on, come on, come on. Ah, you fucker. Come on, come on, come on. No, I'm going to fall behind. And once you're behind... Oh, shit. No, I touched the pole. Fucking hell. No. Not the po Ah, it pushed me into it, man should disqualify that fucking chocobo. Oh. Fucking hell. The first time I made it. Oh, what? I still got the, the trophy? That's a bit silly. So you get the chocobo master trophy if you win the, the race with five chests, but... So I guess they allow you to hit pole. I mean, in-game, there's no point in doing that because you still only get a potion because you've hit pole. So you get the trophy, but... You don't really get what you're looking for in game, so you have to keep going. But if you don't care about the three stars and you just want the trophy, I guess uh, it's acceptable. Damn chocobo! Because it's like because it because the road is so narrow as well. 
It's uh, it often gets in your way. I'm too slow this time. I'm pretty sure. Jump in front of that fucker. Yes! Got him. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Okay. So it, it took a to total of about 10 minutes. It's not too bad. Five chests opened. Three stars times 60. Perfect. I was a little bit worried about this, thinking it's going to take me hours to, to, to do this game. But I'm happy with that. And those are, like I said from the beginning, those are some seriously high-powered items for this uh, for this stage of the game. As far as I know, it is possible to, to open the sixth chest, but um, you're not going to get any benefit from that. You still get a potion. So don't bother. Okay... Go Kamari. Okay, let's have a look at these um these abilities. So, like I said, break MP limit for uh, for armors, break HP limit, and Master Thief. So, seriously good stuff. If you're making an you know uh, not a post game but a main game ultimate armor for Riku, Master Thief is probably a good idea to to have it on there. And one MP cost. Brilliant. Wings to Discovery, uh, I think you need 60 to give you triple AP. So you're not going to be able to get another 30 for a while. So I guess it's probably a case of just waiting for that armor that has the right number of free slots. And uh, it should be good to go. I mean, as you can see, Riku's armor's not that great at the moment. Although she does have one with um, two free slots. Which I might be interested in customizing, actually. Let me have a quick look. Nah. So, I'll keep those items in reserve. I'm sure I'll need them at some point. But for now, I just want something with enough uh, free slots. Okay, let's roll. We shall be back. And I have the one final thing to, to show you in the in the Calm Lands. And then we can finally move on towards Mount Gagazette. Kimari's home. And where unsurprisingly his um his kind of character development is completed. It's a good thing that the Chocobo still waits for you. Otherwise you'd have a tough time. So the place we are heading to now is likely the place you will spend many, many hours in in the post game. The Monster Arena. Oh boy. Memories of no sphere grid stuff. Spent hundreds, probably thousands of hours in here. The old man in his monster arena. Okay, let's have a chat and see what he wants. This is a training area that Lord Meehan constructed for the Crusaders. You can hone your battle skills here by fighting fiends gathered from all over Spira. But the fiends all got away because I uh, screwed up. I'm too old to gather fiends now, so I'm in quite a fix. So, that's where you come in, Sonny. Can I ask you to round up all the fiends for me? Of course, I'm not asking you to do it for free. There'll be nice fat rewards. And he's not lying about that. The rewards you get from here are pretty crazy sometimes. On top of that, you can hone your, f hone your fighting skills anytime against the fiends you bring back here. In addition, any items you win during the training are yours to keep for free. But there will be a small fee for each training session, so bear that in mind. How about it? Not a bad deal, eh? You won't regret it. I'll do it. <laughs> Gotta catch them all. Okay. So, this guy's a bit of an arsehole. He's, uh, he's selling you his own special merchandise that you have to use. So there's not much we can do. <laughs> okay, let's see the weapons. 
So, uh, this guy, th this is the only way to get the capture ability weapons, but the nice thing about it is they have one, three, they have one free slot. So, obviously the best things to do with this is either to customize Evade Encounter, if your strength is good, you can just, uh, you know, evade their attack, kill them, and when you kill them, you end up capturing them. So, that's how you capture enemies, by depleting their HP and bringing it down to zero. So yeah, um, I'm not going to bother with any monster capturing until the post game because that takes a long time, and it's just, and it's obviously a lot easier to do it once your characters are at higher levels. So once you're one hit killing almost everything, you know all the fiends that you can get, then obviously stuff like evade encounter is going to be, you know, you're going to capture fiends a lot more quickly. So I'd probably leave this for the post game, but it's up to you if you want to take a break from the story. And uh, you can backtrack, you can capture in the Calm Lands, you can capture in Macalania, you can go back to the Thunder Plains if you wish. So um, go online and look up the prizes that you can get for capturing uh, the Fiends and go nuts. But like I said, I'm going to continue with the story because as I've said from the beginning, this is a primarily story focused playthrough until we get to the end of the story. And then we'll start all the real fun. So, the big expanse is over, it's back to corridors. It was fun while it lasted. Okay, there is a boss battle coming up. Do be careful. Summons from Lord Seymour. Come with us. We have nothing to discuss with Maester Seymour. Yeah, so out of our way. Lord Seymour's commands must be obeyed. You will come. I warn you. The Maester doesn't need you alive. Seriously, just who do these Guado think they are? Telling us to... Demanding us to, to go with them. Seriously. Fuck those guys. Okay. Defender X. Resistant to physical attacks. Made of stone. So, petrification is probably not going to work. And he has 64,000 HP, which is quite a jump from the... 36,000 that Nate has had. So, he's a... He's a tough cookie. Let's see what Provoke does. Okay, Provoke did something, and we're going to find out what that is fairly soon. This guy hits very hard physically. He has some very tough physical attacks, so especially for your weaker characters, and pretty much all of them, he can take pretty much all of them out in one hit, so Protect is a very smart move. Let's speed up Yuna so that she can cast Protect a bit more easily. Okay, so because we've provoked him, he's using an attack called Blast Punch, and that takes away half of your current HP. So that's not a particularly great attack. So one way to, to really limit his uh, his abilities is to is to cast Provoke, and obviously leave Titus on the field. Uh, immune to, to poison, so don't waste your time with that. But, as you can see, it's going to take quite a while to, to take away that much HP. So, let's, ha let's uh, have a look at the usual stuff, like Power Break. Let's begin with that, because it's always a good idea to start with that. He's immune to Power Break, so that's not good. But, like I say, I've completely taken away, you know, 
anything that he had going for him by using Provoke. So as long as you keep Tidus on the field and heal him, you'll be fine. Okay, so let's take him away because not a lot of people would know to provoke him. What does he do when not provoked? Um, let's bring in someone else. Let's bring in Kimmy. Can't learn it yet. It's almost 2,000 damage. Pretty steep. Protect. No, she does not. So, as you can see, people like Yuna are really going to have a tough time. Let's check out Armor Break. That works, so you can Armor Break him. And he occasionally counters with uh, Blast Punch anyway, regardless of whether he's provoked or not. You can steal Lunar Curtains, which is a bit of a strange steal because it should really be Light Curtains since he's, you know, he specialises in physical damage, but okay, that's how he wants to play it. What else we got? Is he immune to darkness? No, he is not. So it seems like he retaliates, uh, he retaliates with there you go. So if you use Dark Buster, he will retaliate with, uh, with Blast Punch. Come on, let me at least get one more steal. Ouch. So you do need to stay on the ball. Lucky for you, he doesn't really have any uh, multi-hit attacks, so that, you have that going for you. Yes, we might as well protect Waka as well. But if you still find that you're taking a lot of damage, obviously uh, Cheer is a good idea. And you saw that Haymaker, that Haymaker attack. Without Protect, it would have done almost 4,000 damage. So Haymaker is one that you need to watch out for. As far as I know, he attacks three times and then uses Haymaker. So be wary of that. I think I'll probably use a Mega Potion here. Have 17 anyway. So against this guy you don't really need Elemental Protection, just to have whatever's going to boost your HP the most. I'm going to use Cheer a few times and then um, I'm going to use Tidus' Overdrive. So once his armor broken, obviously physical attacks are also fine to use. Let me have a look at HP before and after, and again we can see the, the power of uh, attack reels. 48,000, okay. Let's see what attack reels does here. Crazy damage. <laughs> That's insane. I think I'm not going to use attack reels again. It's just it's too strong. Seriously. I mean, I have used cheer a couple of times as well, but it's still it's just too strong. Um. Okay, check this out. So guard plus evade and counter. How good is that? <laughs> Not only does Auron take the hit, he evades the hit and also retaliates as well. So you can see why evade and counter is just such an awesome ability. You can't do that for Haymaker. When he, when he uses Haymaker, you have no choice but to let him hit you. So be careful of that. But with Protect, it brings it below 2,000. So 
it should be manageable. This might be it. Oh shit. Okay. You see the difference here. I mean, uh, Waka was hitting for 2,600, 2,700. And Titus is only managing 1,000 per hit. So, big difference. Is he gonna... Is he gonna use Mighty Guard or not? Yep, okay. So once he falls below a certain HP threshold, he will use Mighty Guard. And that will give him Protect, Shell, and Immunity against all four elements. So, does Yuna know Dispel yet? She does not, I think. Yeah, she knows Reflect, but not Dispel. So if you have Dispel, then you can get rid of that. Or if you have a Purifying Salt, which I talked about earlier, you can also do that. I think I only have one, though. So it's unnecessary, but you can use a purifying salt to get rid of all of these um, things that it has. I just want to give Kimari a turn to see if he can uh, get that mighty guard as an ability. Because I tried Lancet before and it didn't work, so maybe after he's used it it might work. Nope, still doesn't work, so he has to learn it from uh, someone else. Okay, we might as well end this thing. Get some Mega Flare in there. What you're going to notice is that Bahama is, uh, at the moment, the only Aeon that can break the damage limit. So, uh, there will come a time when his Overdrive will break the damage limit, while the others uh, are still stuck. So, oh shit, I didn't Grand Summon. Oh, damn it. Okay, so take two. I tried to let it attack me so that my overdrive would increase, but it was doing too much damage, so I had to dismiss and summon again. I did a quick check after one of the recording sessions that I did earlier, and it turns out that this actually does uh, less damage than than uh, Energy Blast if, uh, if the two Aeons were to have the same strength. Yeah, not bad. Okay, so there's gonna be a, I think there's gonna be a mini cutscene here, and then 